Hello everyone and welcome back to the Project Cars Career Series here on Box 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 Gaming. My name is Justin and today we're going to be finishing up the Road Club Entry UK Cup. Road Entry Club UK Cup. The Club Entry UK Cup. Club. <laughs> oh man. Uh, let's see, I'm just taking a look at... Uh, Yeah, it looks like they're only tweeting because, yeah, I didn't win the last race. Um, also, you guys wouldn't be seeing the championship standings, so I've decided I'm going to try and do that uh, uh, at the beginning of videos. So uh, that's the Cart 1 championship. Uh, where is the road entry? Is that not in here? I'm not seeing the uh, the whatever cl <laughs> club cup whatever that that I'm that I've been doing I don't see it on here huh interesting yeah well we're tied up now uh, basically uh, yeah I got an entry to the road TC oh wait I've got a couple of uh, I got an invitation to the ho historic the Horic, the historic GT4 M1 Pro Car Challenge, and an invitation to the Road TC Euro Championship. Uh, those are from Final Drive and Southern Storm. Um, so those will be happening at some point. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the calendar and just uh, see. Yep. Yep, it is the Road Entry Club UK Cup that is up next. This time I am going to do practice after a very exciting race. Um, but yeah, we are currently tied, uh, me and uh, Jesus. I'm tied with Jesus for the lead of the championship right now. Um, and I'm, I'm looking for a way to show you that, but it doesn't look like I can. So that's unfortunate. But we're tied at 58 points apiece, uh, which means pretty much whoever wins at Snedderton here is going to win the championship. And, of course, I want to win that championship and get this over with. I don't want to be racing the uh, Caterham Super 7 for uh, a million episodes. As much as I love the car and I love the circuits we're driving at, uh, I'd rather push forward and continue on in this qualifying series as we are now at episode 10. And I want to keep the ball rolling. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into this practice session. So uh, we're only going to use about half the practice session, 15 minutes or so. Um, we're just going to bang in a, a fast qualifying lap, uh, however long that takes, 5 or 10 minutes. Uh, and then we'll jump straight into the six lap race. We're going to go ahead and do the same things we normally do. And we're going to drop these tire pressures as low as they'll go. And then we're going to take care of the fuel load. Um, we'll set it for 15 there, set it for 10 here. We hit save and we hit drive so that we don't have to hear these stupid cars going by. Every time, every time someone comes by. Um, so I have watched uh, Onage's video, uh, same with the last one where he drove this circuit. He's been pumping out the career videos pretty uh, pretty quick recently. Uh, he also did skip over the cart stuff, or he skipped over more cart stuff than I did. Uh, so he's less videos in, but he's farther into the actual career, if that makes any sense. I think, I believe he's made less videos than I have, but uh, he's, he's, uh, he's farther ahead. Um, and I think that's because he skipped over carting stuff, which I don't blame him. Uh, that, that took a while felt like it took a while uh, six episodes of the career that's I mean that's not too bad if, if it had been much more than that I would have started to get real sick of it but uh, if it had been a little bit less than that I would have been fine with it too especially considering I did two races in some of those videos oh no I definitely need to scrub off more speed for that corner got a car coming but it's practice so YOLO He's going to go up my inside anyway. Nope, there he is. Okay, I don't know what to do for this corner. I do know there's a tight left-hander coming up after it, though. So I'm going to stay to the right-hand side here. Uh, oh, oh, and then I'm going to spin and hit the barrier. And I don't 
don't think I have any damage. At least not significant mechanical damage. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on. Take a look at the tire temperatures. Oh yeah, we got 15 on the front, 35-ish on the back. Uh, look at look at those pressures just drop. And then oh wow, and then all of a sudden they got a lot warmer for a second there. I can carry more speed through that corner. It does seem that tire warm-up is a thing, though. Because you can really see the temperature spike when you're weaving back and forth. You can see them spiking up on each side, so it looks like this might actually be, uh, be helpful. Okay, so third gear for this one. And then brake again. Brake harder. I mean, that was probably the right amount of brake braking for if my tires were warmed up. You can see it was right on the limit there, but with the tires in their current condition, I should have braked more for that corner. Try not braking for this one. Yeah, you can just lift off into it. And then actually, I think I want to double apex this. Yep, okay. So we got one tire up to temperature. Let's do our weaving again. Oh wow, wow, look how much more speed we carried than that guy. But no, he didn't care. He didn't care that we were on his inside. He said, nah man, nah, nah bro. Three, three tires up to temperature, three temperatures up to tire. I swear I'm good at words. Go ahead, practice some overtaking since uh, this lap time's been invalidated anyway. And I'm gonna take a later apex here in an effort to try and straighten the car up. Wow, that is a tough corner. That is a really tough corner. Uh, that's going to have to be the main focus for me in these practice sessions. Uh, basically, I'll get an opportunity to try it again every 90 seconds. Tap of the brakes. Yep. What are you doing, dude? What are you doing, dude? Oh, oversteer, under braking, and out at the exit of the corner as well. <laughs> Just lots and lots of oversteer. I think I'm lighter on fuel than this guy, though, so even though he's getting the slipstream, I am pulling away from him. I think the AI does practice with the max amount of fuel, which is like 36 liters or something. That wasn't bad. Oversteer, but I think it was quick. Oversteer is beneficial sometimes, and in certain cars, uh, like this type of car. Oversteer is not always such a bad thing. Now that was bad oversteer. Okay, I'm going to try a radically different line through that corner next time. I'm going to take the latest Apex. 
<laughs> the latest apex that you have ever seen in your entire life. Look how much more speed I carry through turn one than them. It's actually incredible. Can't just turn in on me, man. Wow, I'm a tenth up after going side by side with that guy, so that's a good sign. All four wheels up to temperature now. I am getting the oversteer issue under braking that happens with this car, specifically on low fuel. The, the car is much more stable at high fuel, but it's not nearly as quick, obviously. I don't, nope, that was way too much speed. That was way too much speed. Nice job, dude. Nice job. You see a car spinning out in front of you, and what do you do? You accelerate, just flat out. Just flat out. Uh, we're just we're gonna return to the pit box. And we're gonna go drive. And I'm gonna spend five minutes warming up my tires again, and hopefully we'll get two good laps in. Of course, feedback is feeling really loose on this car right now. I don't know if uh, cold tires affects the force feedback. Oops. Oh, oh. Just ignore that. Yeah, a little bit of a slide through the corners isn't such a bad thing when your tires are cold, I don't think. Helps warm them up quicker. Let's get to swerving again. Okay, that's too much swerving. very controlled. You can't swerve these things like F1 cars, obviously, because of the lack of downforce. So you, you gotta do a nice, slow, controlled swerve. Oh, man. I got on the brakes there, and it started to slide at the entrance to, this, to the second part of the chicane, which obviously is a problem then you're going to get an overseer through the entire second part of the chicane. So let's test this, this new line. Nope, nope, that's not what I wanted. Let's blame that on cold tires. We'll blame that on cold tires. And actually now I'm thinking about double apexing it. Just turning in really early, letting the car run out wide getting off the throttle and bringing it back in. Oh, I need to be swerving. swerving again. Just keep swerving, just keep swerving. Okay, so we're going to try this double apex line through the corner. God, oh man, that corner is brutal. It's brutal. Again, my tires are still cold, but still, getting this car slowed down at that corner at that corner specifically has been quite a challenge. Which means this is a great choice of circuit, I think, for this car. Anything that makes this car difficult to drive is a good choice, <laughs> in my opinion.
No surprise, the AI went super deep in there, as the AI is one to do. Okay, this is good, this is good. I was overly cautious there, so that's a great starting point. I think, believe it or not, I think that was the quickest I've gone in that sector so far. Yeah, you can see, even with all the swerving, I'm only eight tenths down. and initiate some oversteer here. Oh my god, it's such a pain warming up these tires in this game. Like seriously, dude. Oh man, I was really hoping it was just going to be a problem with the carts, but it's just such a pain to get the tires up to temperature in this game. I feel like it's way harder than it needs to be. Like, way harder. I'm swerving so much. I'm doing so much swerving, you guys. No, no. Oh my god, will that at least warm up the tires? No, of course not. Of course not. Of course not. Oh, this is getting really frustrating. Just warm up my goddamn tires, dude! We have tire blankets! I know we have tire blankets! Because we always start the race on green tires, so I know there's tire blankets. I know they exist. Use them in practice. That's all I'm saying. I don't know what more I can do to warm up these tires, I really don't. Oh God, screw you, man. Screw you. Hey, yeah, I know, I was swerving, I don't care. Are you serious, I'm P1 right now? I'm P1. Oh, no. Okay, I'm gonna see where this guy breaks. Oh! Like, after this sign. That makes sense. Maybe his tires are warm. I wonder what that's like to have warm tires. Yeah, I, I've spent like eight minutes warming up my tires. This is stupid. This is stupid. This is stupid. Was I yeah, no, I was 20th. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense than P1. My god. I don't know what the issues are here. Let's go. Just let me out. Just let me out. Screw all those guys. Just put me in the fast lane. Oops. I didn't want to change the camera angle there. There we go.
I'm not playing around with these tires anymore. I'm gonna get these things up to temperature. You better believe I am. Yeah, go on. Just go past me, man. Just go past me. Oh my god, there are so many cars behind me! Oh man. This is gonna get hectic. Alright, I got three tires up to temperature. After some really, really aggressive swerving though. Really, really aggressive. I mean, you guys saw. Oh man, oh man. Yeah, I'm actually trying to warm up the front tires right now just by slamming on the brakes. And I'll find a gap while I'm doing this. Okay, here we go. This is a good gap. This is a good gap. I need to not let this guy in front of me. There we go. All four tires up to temperature. We got a gap ahead of us. Now we need to smash it on pull. go got a little bit of a gap to the car behind just hope nobody comes out of the pits ahead of us we just need no one to be coming out of the pits ahead of us this is our moment okay okay not my best turn one but it wasn't bad I'm playing it safe I'm not playing it safe anymore, though. That is a personal best for me, but I don't know if that's going to be enough for pull. 
Still got quite a gap in front of me though, so this should be a pretty decent lap. That was tricky. That was tricky. We made it work though. Still up. That's not how you're supposed to take that corner. That is not how you're supposed to take that corner. What's it gonna be though? That's P1 with a 131.2. Let's see if we can do any better. Still got this little gap ahead of us. That's much better through turn one. Much better through turn one. Oh no. Oh, no, that's not good. That's not good. I don't think there's enough time to warm up my tires and get in another flying lap, so let's just go ahead and uh, skip to the end of the session and see if I can hold on pole. I do by 1.6 seconds. 1.6 seconds. That's the gap. You saw the lap I just put in. That was not a very good lap. <laughs> and I put it on pole. Meanwhile, Jesus down in 10th. Look at Jesus. In 10th there, he's going to be struggling for sure. So it looks like it is my championship to lose here. From pole position at Snetterton, we've got the sixth lap race. Starting on warm tires, like magic. Nice start. Very nice start. Looks like I'll hold on to this lead heading into the first corner. And I'll probably pull a nice gap as well, because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna break. I lifted a little bit. It was a micro lift. I was still at about half throttle, uh, but you can see I've gained a significant gap over the rest of the field at this point. Drifting my way through that corner and this one to gain even more time. You can see that gap to the next car already 1.7 seconds and we're only on the back straight of lap one. And it looks like he's pulling out a gap to the rest of the cars behind him, so it's an even bigger gap. You can see him gaining time all the way down this straight here, probably because of the lighter fuel load. I've carried a little bit too much speed, or have I actually? That felt very nice through there. It must be because the uh, tires are up to temperature because uh, carrying that much speed into that corner in practice usually meant I was going to get oversteer under braking for the following right-hander. And I'm going to try my late apex technique here. I'm going to brake early though and be cautious because of the gap that I have. There's no reason to be flirting with this corner. Now you can see I lost lots of time at the entrance for that corner, but now I'm just gaining time all the way down the street from these guys. I'm starting to think that maybe I should just run with the maximum fuel level and see if maybe that makes some sort of difference. I'll still run low fuel in qualifying, uh, as they should be doing as well, but uh, I think I'm going to start running with the maximum 36 or whatever liters that you could put in this car, because I'm starting to think, based on how I'm pulling away on the straights, that just my ability as a human to know how much fuel I need for the race is winning me these races by a comfortable margin. You can see 3.6 seconds already is the gap to the next car. 3.8 is just gaining, 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 getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the way down this straight as I only have 14 liters of fuel in the car and I'm sure he's over 30 liters of fuel in the car. Um, so I think maybe for the next race I'll try for race fuel, just running a full tank and see if that makes the AI more competitive. And now we lift. Jab, jab, jab the power to get the right line that we need. Sliding all the way through that corner, leaving a nice trail of smoke behind us. You can see that gap shortening up as the AI enters that corner and then just again, growing, 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 growing. 
They're very aggressive at the entrance of corners, which is destroying their exit of corners. Remember, uh, those of you who are racers will, will know the old adage, slow in, fast out. And that's exactly the technique that I'm applying, and you can see it's absolutely destroying the AI, who is doing fast in, slow out, which is just not really what you want. Taking a much tighter line and much more grip through that hairpin versus previous laps. And you can see I'm actually down, so uh, drifting through that hairpin and onto this straight might actually be the faster way to go. As I mentioned before, or in a previous video, I don't remember if it was this video or the last one, but oversteer is not always slower. Uh, it tends to be in an F1 car or a car with downforce, but in a car like this, oversteer can be your friend if used properly. Because again, as I've mentioned with this car, it's very easy to control the oversteer, and controlled oversteer is a very quick way around a corner. Um, that's what rally drivers do. Um, and you know, that's not always best for uh, road racing, but sometimes it is. <laughs> Really, it's really dependent on the car and the corner, of course. You know, not all cars are going to be faster with a controlled oversteer moment through a corner, especially through all corners. Um, you get what I'm saying. You guys get it. You're a smart lot. 7.7 7 seconds now. Lap four, halfway through this race now. I'm not gonna slow down. I'm not gonna slow down for them. If I make a mistake, I make a mistake. Lift and jab, jab and brake. Not the best line through there. I got on the brakes a little bit late there, which meant, uh, which compromised my entrance to the corner, which is also going to compromise my exit here. So I think I'm actually losing time all the way down the straight compared to previous laps. It's uh, 130.9. I think that's faster than my pole position lap, though, if I'm not mistaken. And again, down in that first sector, it does appear that the really aggressive slide into that hairpin on that previous lap, I think it was lap two, was the fastest way. It's just, it's so dangerous, You're, you, you run the risk, of course, of uh, spinning out. Oh no, and that was not what I wanted to do. Thankfully, I have a nice gap here. And I'm actually sweating quite a bit. My AC is not turned on very low, so this is pretty intense for me right now. And I should have no problem winning this race. This is the end of the penultimate lap. One lap to go. White flag this time by. Gonna break a lot earlier for this one. That's what I want to be doing. You can see that gap growing once again with my much better exit through that final corner. And actually, I didn't see a white flag. That would be a nice addition because they have the uh, they have the guy waving the checkered flag when you come across to finish the race. It'd be nice if they had had that same guy waving a white flag at the start of the final lap.
Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's not what I wanted to do. I think I just need to finish ahead of Jesus, though. He's the one that I was tied with, so I'm going to go ahead and finish in P4 here. As long as it gets me the championship, I'm fine with it. I think after I see the standings, I'll have the option to uh, restart if I need to. If I do have to restart, I'll probably cut out the boring bits from this race, where I was just pulling away. Well, let's see what happens as we cross the line in fourth, just outside of the podium positions after two really bad spins at pretty much the same corner each time. Uh, and wow, Jesus, not even in the top ten. Yes, I know it's pronounced Jesus, but that's no fun. Let's call him Jesus. Um... Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and select the replay now, but then I'm gonna come back on and we're gonna talk about the results. Um, but of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it up so that you don't see it. So I'll see you in just a second here. All right. So again, that was fourth place, but we did get pole position and fastest lap. So I'm hoping that is enough. Uh, let's find out. Yes, yes, I did win in the end champion Justin Sutton for the Road Entry Club. Very happy with that. And let's see, in the end, oh yeah, huge gap. Uh, Jesus not scoring any points uh, there in the final round there. And I, of course, did pick up 12. Oh, I guess there wasn't points for fastest lap in pole position because I just picked up the 12 from my fourth place. But that was more than enough to win the championship with 70 for the four races, uh, which would be an average of 17.5 points. So usually third on average. And we're going to go back to the dashboard and just see what this has done exactly for us. Awarded bronze accolade for winning Road Entry Club UK Cup. And we've got an inbox message that's has had to do with qualifying. And it looks like that's it. So uh, let's go ahead and just take a quick peek at the pal calendar and see what is up next for us. It does look like it is the Lakeville Focus Challenge, uh, which is at Sonoma Raceway. And I believe this is a front wheel drive car, uh, which is not something I'm super excited about trying. Um, how do I know which ones are for me? Like, which ones I've been invited to? I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys really feel like seeing me do this Lakeville Focus Challenge. Uh, if not, I'll probably skip that. Um, I, d I really don't have any desire to drive a Focus in real life or in a video game. So, uh, if you guys really want to see it, though, I'll absolutely do it. Uh, it does look like it is a one-off. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a single race. It's not like there's one every week or anything. So... Uh, maybe I will do it, whether you guys want it or not. <laughs> um, so we'll see exactly. I don't know why this still says 125cc shifter card up at the top. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I might end up doing that anyway. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll just see what happens. But thank you guys for joining. I will see you next time. Coming up next is the replay from that race where I got that fourth place finish. Uh, I just watched it myself, and it's actually pretty good. So um, I, I would recommend watching it. Uh, it's got some nice, nice slides in there, some nice moves. Uh, all right, guys, thanks again for joining me. I will see you next time.
Thank <laughs> you.